When dinosaurs roamed the earth, tales of savagery and voodoo. I grew up in a barbaric prehistoric age. My parents lived on a Long Island, which the natives simply and logically called Long Island. My tribe consisted of Irish Catholics who had seized control of an area called Gerritsen Beach because evidently nobody else wanted it. Dinosaurs still roamed the earth, wreaking havoc upon human encampments. The most monstrous dinosaurs had strange, un-Irish names. The worst were called Hitler and Mussolini. Others, named Stalin and Franco, were said to be man-eaters also. But they were all far away, across the ocean. When I was small, we were all convinced they would never come and bother us in America. We were much more afraid of a more immediate monster called the Depression. The Depression had thrown many men out of work, and everybody with a job seemed to fear they might wake up at Christ o'clock in the morning any day of the year and find their own jobs had vanished just like fairies' gold. I hadn't been born in Gerritsen Beach. I had been expelled from a kind of lush and lavish Lily Samadhi tank, a warm, watery womb, and to the Flatbush area of Brooklyn in 1932. The Depression had already brought unemployment to many, but not to my family. My father had a good job somewhere. I haven't the gopher's notion of what he was working at, but I dimly remember a very early time when I felt that we were safe from the god-awful things the Depression was doing to some of our relatives. Then suddenly the Depression turned around and dumped its golden turd of the week on us, too. The company my father had been working for went out of business, and he and hundreds of others found themselves without jobs. We moved to Gerritsen Beach, where rents were very low, because only the poor Irish Catholics lived there. I learned, somehow, vaguely, that back in Brooklyn and Manhattan, vast armies of homeless, nearly starving people were roaming the streets begging, the consequence of ten years of voodoo economics in the White House, a system named by George Herbert Walker Bush, later its most skilled practitioner. It consists of keeping the marks distracted with bright chatter while you empty their pockets, or their SNL accounts. We are beginning to see some of the same medieval squalor again as I write this memoir. We've just had another ten years of voodoo economics, and the streets once more are as full of human debris as any backward nation in the Third World. As Santayana said, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Listen. You can hear those hoodoo voodoo zombie drums every time President Bush opens his mouth. Don't read his lips. He lies. Listen closely and you'll hear the beat-beat-beat of the tom-tom as the jungle shadows fall. 